Hey, this is Math 2 Unit 10, Worksheet Number 7. And so what we have today is we are looking here at what's called the intercept form. We've talked about the vertex form, which shows you quickly what your vertex is going to be. Meaning like if you have that parabola, your high point, your maximum, your minimum, and what that vertex is going to be based upon your x and your, your h and your k value. We have our standard form here, which is a typical way we've learned about quadratics and how it's set up. And today we're talking about the intercept form. And the intercept form allows us to take a look at values such as P and Q and use those numbers to tell you quickly where it crosses the, um, the X axis at, okay? Um, or sorry, yeah, the, yeah, the Y, the X intercepts, okay? So X intercepts, so here we go. So let's find this real quick. So if the X intercepts, the other day when we did it the longer way, we set them equal to zero, made an equation. X minus three equals zero x plus 1 equals 0. When we solve that, you end up with x equals 3 and x equals negative 1. Those are the terms we're going to use then to find our ordered pairs because we want to write it down as an ordered pair. So this becomes 3 comma 0. That's the ordered pair for one of the intercepts. And negative 1 comma 0 becomes the other intercept. Why do we put 0 there? Because we set them equal to 0. Y is equal to 0 there. Here in this one here, again, set them equal to 0. I'm not going to have to worry about this part right there. That's not important for my intercept part. Okay, so don't really worry about it too much. Again, you can use the equation if you want. X minus 3 equals 0. X minus 6 equals 0 and solve. You have X equals 3. X equals 6. And so as a pair, this becomes 3 comma 0 again. And this becomes 6 comma 0. And those are my X intercepts uh, for that one. All right. Moving down here, again, don't worry about that number out in the front, that A value. We're going to do X plus 2 equals 0 and X minus 9 equals 0. That becomes X equals minus 2. That becomes X equals 9. So as an ordered pair, this is negative 2 comma 0 and 9 comma 0 right there. Moving on down. The same set of quadratic functions, find the Y intercept. So the Y intercept happens when what? When X equals 0. When x is 0, it's going to cross the y-intercept. So we can plug 0 in for all of these. Okay, so what's y going to be? If I do 0 minus 3 times 0 plus 1, 0 minus 3 is a negative 3, 0 plus 1 is 1, and negative 3 times 1 is negative 3. So that's going to be y equals negative 3. When does y equal negative 3? Well, as an ordered pair, as an ordered pair, when x is 0, y is negative 3. That's my y-intercept. For the next one, same idea. That's all going to multiply out. So I have negative 1 half times 0 minus 3 times 0 minus 6. This becomes negative 1 half times negative 3 times negative 6. Okay? Doesn't really matter the order here. Negative 3 times negative 6 is a positive 18 positive 18 times a negative half. So I can write this out. Negative half times 18 is going to equal, right, when I multiply that out, it's going to equal negative 9. So what does that mean? That means when x is 0, y is negative 9. And the last one here, we'll do negative 6 times 0 plus 2 times 0 minus 9. So we end up with negative 6 times 2 times negative 9. Negative 6 times a negative 9 is a positive 54. 54 times 2 is 108. So once again, what's that mean? When x is 0, y is now 108. And that's the idea. So now we have three different forms to write this. And the cool part about today's lesson really is that now you can kind of see how these work together and help you answer different questions, sometimes a little faster than others, depending upon the form you decide to use. So first, we're going to factor and then sketch this right here. So let's factor it out. First of all, we can factor this by saying this is going to be an x and an x and negative 8 there. So uh, because I want to multiply and end up with my outsides and insides coming together to make 2, I'm going to put a 4 there and a 2 there. Because 4 times 2 is 8. For it to be negative, 1 has to be a negative and 1 has to be positive. I want it ultimately this b value to be a positive 2. So if I make this plus and this minus, that gives me a 4x and a minus 2x, which make the 2x there. I can double check this one. 4 times negative 2 is equal to negative 8, so I know I'm good there. So for my x-intercepts, 
okay, talking about what the solution is gonna be, that's gonna be when x intercept is when y equals zero. That's setting them equal to zero. x plus four equals zero, x minus two equals zero. So what do we come up with? x equals negative four, x equals two. So when x is negative four, the y is zero. And when x is two, y is also zero, okay? So those become my two intercepts there. The axis of symmetry. Well, the axis of symmetry is gonna be where this thing starts to bend a little bit, right? Where is it gonna like kind of fold over and do its little thing? Well, that's a little different kind of question, isn't it? Because at this point, we're looking and saying, well, how do I solve for the axis of symmetry? Well, if you were to plot these points real quick, let's just see what we have. This is at negative four, one, two, three, four, and zero there. And then we have one at two, zero, one, two, zero, right here. So you're looking for that midpoint between the two of them, that's gonna be that reflective point for where that's gonna be. So think of it this way, it's like going one, two, three, four, five, six. If six is the distance, I wanna go three across, so one, two, three, and this point right here, this line in here, at negative one is going to be my axis of symmetry. That's when x equals negative one right there. Okay, so that's my point in between there for where that's going to be. Secondly, then now when x is going to be equal to negative one, what where is y going to be? What's going to happen to y? So let's find out. So when y equals negative one plus four times negative one minus two, what do we end up with? Well, y is gonna equal negative one plus four is a uh, positive three times negative one minus two, which is minus three. And three times negative three is negative nine. So when x equals negative one, y equals negative nine. That's my vertex. So we're gonna go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine and plot the point right there. Okay, and we curve like this, we curve like this, that's my graph. What's the y-intercept? Y-intercept happens when what? When x equals zero, right? So we know when x equals zero. Let's now use our same little equation up here. So y equals zero plus four times zero minus two, or the same as four times minus two, which is a minus eight. So our y-intercept is gonna be at minus eight. So that's kind of the idea there. So a little bit of logic involved, some fun stuff. I don't know, just enjoyable. Fun to play with numbers, I guess. All right, let's take a look at the next side. Gonna first of all look at number 15. All right, number 15 first of all. Oops, sorry, my notes out. So number 15, we're gonna factor it. This becomes x and x, we gotta get the sevens, so we're gonna say seven and one. I want a positive seven and I want a negative eight x there, so let's make this a negative and a negative because a negative times a negative is a positive. And then a negative seven and a negative one, add together to make a negative eight. Perfect. So now looking at this, what are my y intercept, x intercepts gonna be? That's when y equals zero. So if I do x minus seven equals zero, and x minus one equals zero. We have x equals seven and x equals one. So at seven, we're at a y-intercept and at one, we're at a y-intercept. All right, so we can kind of plot those out there. So seven and one. So here's one and then two, three, four, five, six, seven is the other one. And that's where we are for our two points that we know so far. For that axis of symmetry, now we're taking a look at, well, what's kind of in between those two things there? Well, we, we can come back there. You don't have to go in that order if you don't want to, okay? We can or we can't. I mean, it, it's kind of up to you. For the y-intercept, we can come back to that. Well, depends on how you want to do it. I like to just for now, just for what we know so far, I'm gonna count the distance between these things. So I'm gonna go one, two, three, four, five, six. So the halfway is gonna be three. One, two, three, which is right there, that, that line. That is when x equals what? One, two, three, four. So that's gonna be when x equals four is where our axis of symmetry is gonna be. 
So when I plug that value in, I can find out what y is gonna be. What is y when x equals four? Well, we have four minus seven times four minus one. Four minus seven is a minus three, and four minus one is a positive three, so we have a negative nine. So my vertex, when x is four, y ends up being negative nine. That's what my vertex is gonna be. So we go down one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine for my vertex right there, right? So that's my vertex. We know we're curving like this. It's a very bad curve, sorry. Okay, my y-intercept is gonna be when x equals zero. So we do y equals, and I, I can look at all this or I can look back up here. It's easier to say if that's zero and that's zero, then this is all zero and what I'm left with. I'm left with just a seven. So I could say it's gonna be zero comma seven. If you wanna plug it all in, you can, but you can simply look at that one and go, that's what it's gonna be. All right, cool. That's what we have so far. Let's take a look at one more of these here. All right, and let's take a look at number, my plan here was to look at number 17. Okay, so first we have find an equivalent version of the uh, sorry, find the equivalent version of the equation in standard form and intercept form and show work for each. Okay, so we're gonna show work for each one. All right, so to put this into standard form, what do we wanna do? Well, we're gonna multiply this out, so we end up with x plus one times x plus one. That becomes x squared plus two x plus two minus eight, and this is all times two. So when we multiply that out, you end up with two x squared plus four x plus four minus eight. Those come together to leave me with two x squared plus four x minus four? No, sorry, minus two there, minus six. No, no, I was right. Yeah, multiply that out, all right? Double check in here. One, oh, sorry, that should be a one. That makes that a two. Yes, minus six. Sorry, don't get ahead of yourself sometimes. So that is in standard form. Okay, no problem with that, we are good with that. Okay, now to put it in intercept form, what we wanna do is we want to factor out what we can here, which is gonna be the at factoring out the two, I should say y equals. So we'll say y equals, let's factor out the two, and we're left with um, x squared plus two x minus three. And now let's factor that again, and we can say we have x, we have x. We can do a three times a one, because I want that to be positive. I'll make a positive two and a negative one to come up with a three x minus one x, and we're good there. So that's what I have for that equation, okay? Starting here, that's my standard form, and that's my intercept form. Find the x-intercepts for each form and show work for each. So, starting this form, what is my x-intercept going to be? The x-intercept is gonna be what? When y equals zero. So we say zero equals two times x plus one squared minus eight. We move eight over here. So eight equals two times x plus one squared. Divide both sides by two. So four equals x plus one squared. Take the square root of both sides. So plus or minus two equals x plus one. We subtract one, subtract one. So we end up with negative one plus or minus two equals x. So my choices are gonna be, I'm gonna have negative one plus two. I'm also have negative one minus two. So I'm gonna end up with negative one plus two is a positive one. Negative one and a minus two is a negative three. So my x-intercepts are where? at one and negative three. Over here, to find where what happens when x equals zero, um, we're gonna factor that out there. So we're gonna say, all right, let's do that. We're gonna make it equal to zero here. And when we do that, we end up factoring it into the point slope form or the intercept form to make this equal to, well, factor two out first, two times x squared plus two x minus three. We divide the two out, so that becomes divided by two, by two, so zero equals x squared plus two x minus three. And we're kind of stuck there, right? There's nothing we can do further. We can't see the points in that regard there. 
if I do any more, what am I gonna do? I'm gonna end up factoring it out into what I have over here. So it makes more sense to look at this one and say, all right, let's make it equal to zero, two times x plus three times x minus one. And then what do we have? Well, this is gonna be x plus three equals zero and x minus one equals zero. So x equals minus three and x equals one. So looking at it, we can see standard form doesn't really get us where we need to go. It doesn't help us, does it? But the vertex form does, but we end up with radical stuff to play with. And that one's pretty quick. So it's a little easier to do that one, isn't it? For the y-intercept, let's see what happens with the y-intercept. y-intercept means when x equals zero. So if I go back to my initial one here, we would say two times zero plus one squared minus eight. So that's just one. So two times one squared minus eight is gonna be two minus eight, which is minus six. So our y-intercept is gonna be zero comma minus six. No problem. Over here, to find out what happens when x equals zero, all right? All right, you're starting with y equals two x squared plus four x minus six. So when x equals zero, what do we have? Zero plus zero minus six. So what's left? Just the minus six. So zero comma minus six. Pretty easy to find it there. So that's a great one for that one, whereas this was a great one for that one so far. And finally over here, we have, again, looking for where does uh, x equals zero. We have y equals two times zero plus three times zero minus one. So we have two times three times minus one. Two times three is six. Six times negative one is negative six. So that becomes your point as well. Okay, which form would you rather use to find the x-intercept? Okay, to find the x-intercepts quickly, I would recommend using the intercept form, right? It was easy to find the x-intercepts right away. That was the easiest one because it was just simple, check, check, opposites good. For the y-intercept, that's probably easiest to look at the standard form because it's just that C value at the end. And if you wanna find the vertex, use the vertex form. And that's kind of the idea here behind all of these today is that you have three different forms. They all are the same in terms of the information, but the way they organize the information helps you find different things faster. Okay, that's it for today. Have a great one, we'll see you next time.